Howdy, good evening, readers. Spencer Chase, Mark Stratcher, coming to you after an SEC defeat over Fort Wayne, 83 to 57. And uh, you may recall my colleague here making a certain statement after the SEC victory over Oakland. And uh, let's take a look at that. I think his big scoring performances are going to come on the road. I think what what you saw tonight is probably going to be it. Now, Marcus, obviously Nate Walters going for a big game here, 29 points. So, uh, do you I'm have a, anything to say for yourself? I'm a genius. I'm a genius. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I think there's, uh, there was clearly a sense of urgency today that we didn't even see on Thursday, and I think uh, I think that says quite a bit. All you got to do is look at the standings and look where the Jacks are at. they got some work to do, and I, I think, you know, first and foremost, it starts with Nate Walters. This team goes as he goes, and I think he delivered today 29 points. That's as good as we can ask. Uh, I'll happily eat my words because that, that was a pretty good performance. And something that Coach Nagy talked about earlier in the season, there just wasn't an emotional or defensive leader on this team. Now, I don't think Walter really emerged as a defensive leader, but he he, he played with emotion today. There's, at that 16-minute mark in the second half, you, yeah. you just saw something go off inside that kid, yeah. and he just decided to play better and really carried the rest of the team with him. The fire was lit um, at that point, you know, I think out of that timeout that they had um, to, to sort of turn the game around, 18-3 run. Walters, I think, had 13 of the 18 points in that Something stretch. Like that. Uh, that's that's pretty good, and, and I think that's ultimately what the Jackrabbits are going to need uh, more of. Now, early in the season, one of the big storylines that uh, you and I and everybody else beat to death was, well, they don't have Griffin Cali, and they need this heart and soul. I think it's totally feet. I, I yeah. really think. I think at this point, uh, he does a lot of the rebounding stuff they need. It's the gritty plays where uh, they had the one towards the end of the first half. Where, Knock the ball off the guy's shoulder, yep, going out of yep. bounds. The very next play off the inbound, he scores. I, those are kind of important plays. I think those are plays that, that Callahan kind of delivered last year. And, you know, maybe they aren't going to replace that role, but I, I think Tony Keegan is as good a candidate as anybody, anybody at this point. Definitely. Good defender, too. The two seniors for this year stepping into the shoes of the senior from last year. Right? Another important factor in this in today's game was the bench play of South Dakota State, going from getting four points in the Oakland game that didn't come until the last minute to 23 points of bench production today, including 12 from Marcus Eamstra, and I think that was a huge difference in this game. A lot of them, to be fair, or a fair amount came at the end when the game was already in. The end. True, well, true. Uh, you know, Marcus Eamstra is a, a key guy. You know, he comes in the same years as Jordan Dykstra, and you figure, well, they're going to be the one-two punch. And uh, Marcus Eamstra hasn't filled out the way Dykstra did. Development has maybe been a little bit slower, but he's, he's, he has a role. He's an excellent passer. He's a very good defender. Uh, he's a smart player. This probably the smartest player on the team, and I think the Jacks are using him in a lot of ways. He was an energy guy today, which is just not something uh, that you would connect to with Mark Seamster. And he delivered in a game where the Jacks, you know, might have had an excuse to come out a little flat, and they did, uh, to be honest. Also, do some foul trouble. We saw a lot of big minutes from Zach Horseman, right. who I think is one of the more underutilized players on this basketball team. And I think he played some good minutes, got some things to work on, but I think we might be seeing more of that kid. And also, we got a lot of time from Jake Biddle. Yeah. I think Jake Biddle is an interesting case for me because you watch him walk off the floor, and it seems like the fans always give him a motivation. Apparently, teammates will protect this kid to the death just because right. of his practice work ethic and just what he brings to the team. I. I don't want to say we're looking at the next Nate Walters. He's the understudy. He is the understudy. Yeah, he's, that, that's who you're learning from. And I, I don't know if, if Spencer Chase spent a year learning under Nate Walters. I think Spencer Chase would be an all right one. I might improve my jump shot. Yes. So I, I think there's there's certainly uh, some good to come from that. Now the Jacks are going to set their rotation at, at any point, you know, whether it's eight guys or nine guys. I think that's what Zach Rosen has left out. You know, they're only going to play so many guys. Uh, they had been going with Prince, Seamstra, and Biddle. That's eight. That's all they, that was all they had used the other night. And uh, they stretched the bench a little bit. Fowles kind of dictated that. I don't think it's bad to, to stretch the bench, but this is sort of the the, uh, the set mark that he usually goes with. And I think Horseman will find his way on the court. I just think maybe not as much as he will. Yeah, certainly interesting to be looking at the bench production of SEC going forward. Once again, SEC wins over Fort Wayne, 83 to 57 for Mark. Let's pick, let's pick your brain a little bit. They go okay. to Western Illinois next week. Yeah. Uh, Western Illinois six and zero, high UPUI. This is your road your road crunch test. Rematch of the title game last last year. What do you sort of see out of the Jacks? 
they win both? Do they win one? What do, what do you think? I think offensive execution is going to be huge because Western Illinois is a slow, a grinder. It's a rock team. fight. Yeah. That is what it is. Every year, that it's a rock fight. That's the word I used twice in two game stories last year. <laughs> it will be a rock fight. So. And I think so. They're going to have to utilize every possession because they're not going to get a lot of easy, cheap opportunities from Western Illinois. That's just not the kind of thing. And that's just not the really the opportunity that they're going to be looking for to kind of get the, all these fast break easy points because that's now Western Illinois. Western Illinois, excuse me. Bison are six and all. Leatherneck are six and all. Jacks two games back.